first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now. As always, appreciate everybody joining us. Wherever you're watching, we are live streaming on our social media channels, we're on our app, we're on our website. So lots of places to find us, lots of places to join in with the conversations that we get to have. And today we are talking about what's written right there, throwing dead salmon into the river. I think we're all used to the idea of taking salmon out of the river, going fishing. There's some runs that are going on, but why would you take them and throw them back in? Well, we're going to discuss that. We have the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife joining us right now. Beth Quillian, uh, as always, it's so nice to have you on here. You've explained a lot of things to us, to me, um, over, the, <laughs> over the course of this show. And this one, though, I saw the uh, release on this, and I was fascinated by why it is this would be going on. I know there's a reason behind it, the Nutrient Enrichment Program. But, Beth, can you talk to us about the program and what it is that ODFW is doing out there? Absolutely. So this is a program that ODFW has been doing since the 90s, and we call it the Nutrient Enrichment Program, and it's put on by ODFW STEP biologists, and STEP is an acronym for Salmon Trout Enhancement Program, and those biologists every year, essentially what they're doing is they're taking salmon that have been spawned at ODFW hatcheries and literally tossing them back into streams to return those nutrients back to the ecosystem. And in this case, we're talking about spring Chinook. And up until this point in the year, they've been out in the Pacific Ocean eating lots of food and getting a lot of nutrients. And now they are making their journey back into the rivers and streams of the Willamette Valley and beyond to create the next generation of salmon. And once they spawn, they die. So what we're doing with the hatchery salmon, once they are spawned and we have tubs of dead fish, we take them out and toss them back into the streams. Which, you know, I mean, when you when you spell it out, it does make sense that you'd want to put that back in there. Now, does that, uh, obviously, it's a nutrient enrichment program, so this is supplementing the lack of actual salmon that are in the rivers right now? Well, you know, historically, before there were dams, uh, thousands of fish were moving up streams and rivers, and there was a, you know, a ton of nutrients that were returned to those areas, and that's still the case some, but that's why we make sure... Um, to return the hatchery salmon that we spawn back because that's a lot of nutrients that is super beneficial to the ecosystem. There's a variety of animals that um, you know eat and rely on those nutrients, everything from bears, vultures, uh, coyotes, raccoons, um, as well as plants like fungi and trees. So it's, it's a really complex e ecosystem and having those nutrients um, be added back is really beneficial across the board. So how do you go about taking these salmon from the hatcheries that have spawned, it's dead salmon, how do you go about getting them from there out into the rivers in the Willamette Valley? Yeah, so the step biologists uh, with a lot of assistance from hatchery staff, district staff, as well as a lot of volunteers actually, um, put them in big old tubs and a tub can you know weigh thousands of pounds um, and a carcass toss could be anywhere from 200 to 800 fish. And each of those fish weighs anywhere from eight to 15 pounds. So they're loaded up into these tubs, they're put on a trailer or in the back of a truck, and we take them out to streams and rivers where they're literally just tossed right into the water. And we choose the sites based on where there's a lower nutrient content or where um, there's not as much uh, wild returns of salmon. So as you can see in the video, you're just literally tossing them out of the truck or off a bridge right into the water. <laughs> Which in some way actually does kind of look fun, but, um, but also I can only imagine the smell that's associated with that too. Yeah, that's... it's not a very pleasant smell. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you, so you mentioned you, you pick sites with lower nutrients that you've obviously already studied, so you know where that's going. How many different sites are there that you're bringing these to? There's quite a few. I don't have the number right off the top of my head, but we have uh, several, you know, different uh, offices that all contribute to this effort, you know, going to different hatcheries to pick up tubs of fish. And um, and you mentioned this has been going for, I think you said 15 years, this program. Yeah, since been, sometime in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Sometime in the 90s. Yeah. Okay, so, we, so even going back further. So it's been going on for a long time. And have you been able to study or see any of the kind of the results of this? I mean, clearly it must be working. 
but um, is there evidence of that actually helping out a lot of things? Yeah, I mean, I think so. You you can go out and, you know, you can see wildlife benefiting from the carcasses in the river. And we've even seen um, trout and feeding on those carcasses. So that, that's another thing. These carcasses are not only beneficial to, you know, bears and vultures and such, but they're beneficial to fish as well. And even the fry that um, these salmon are producing really are helped by the nutrients um, from the the spawned out salmon. That's that's pretty amazing that that can be actually used and brought back in. What do you know what the salmon were used for before this this would happen? They're just part of our hatchery program, you know, for yeah. recreational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, so so you mentioned all the different animals too that are that are benef you know that benefit from this. Um, I know you've said like turkey vultures and other fish and bears. So a lot of things like that. So for people who are out there, you know, in, on the rivers and the streams, if they see, you know, if you see a bunch of people throwing dead salmon in, I guess you'll know what's going on. But if you encounter that, what are some things, especially for people who may not be used to encountering something like this, you know, spawned salmon or dead salmon, what are some, some rules and tips that they should follow if they see this out there? Yeah, there are definitely some things to keep in mind. Um, now, you know, people will know what's going on when you see a bunch of fish, not to be concerned. It's all part of the circle of life. But it's important to remember that um, dead salmon can actually be very harmful to dogs and cats and even people if um, raw, you know, or dead salmon is consumed. So if you are out recreating with your dog, um, make sure you keep an eye on them because they can get very sick from eating dead salmon. There's actually um, a disease, salmon poisoning disease that can happen. And it begins when a parasitic flatworm or a fluke infests, uh, infects a fish. And flukes can infect a variety of fish, not just salmon. And if that fluke has a bacteria, a specific bacteria, um, that bacteria can then infect your dog and cause a lot of problems. So if you see your dog near salmon, um, or especially if you see them eating it, but even if you just see them next to salmon, it's really important to get your dog to the vet as soon as possible. Fortunately, with treatment, um, this disease is treatable and your dog should be fine. Um, but it's very important to keep an eye on them and make sure that you get them um, medication and treatment as soon as possible. So yeah, just, just keep an eye out when you're mm -hmm. recreating near streams and rivers at this time of year. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I mean, just watch out for your dog. I mean, I know it's easy to just, you know, let, let them go run and, uh, you know, run down to the river, but uh, that is certainly something to be concerned with. I know there's also like algae concerns and other kinds of stuff to be worried about too. So uh, keeping an eye on that is, is definitely important. So, I mean, this, this program clearly has been helping out. Um, do you have any other kind of information or data that, that we can share on this? Just so people know, you know, if you go out there and you see what's going on, you can actually understand it a little bit more. Yeah, I don't really have any data or stats for you, unfortunately, but okay. yeah, it's just it's just a really cool program to think about how this is literally the circle of life. And this is one way that we are trying to make sure that uh, nutrients are returned to the ecosystem and go to help such a wide variety of different plants and animals. So that's just a really exciting thing to think about. And then, yeah, just to to take care um, when you're out recreating with your pets, because an easy an easy thing to remember here is that one lick can make your dog sick. So you don't even want them to sniff it or get close to it at all. That is a great saying right there. That is that's a, it's an easy way to remember that. Um, I have to think that there are some people watching here who now want to go do this. Um, for whatever reason and endure whatever the smell is, but, you know, help out for it for a good cause. Uh, are there ways that people can go volunteer and actually be a part of this? Yeah, the best way uh, to potentially be involved would be to give your local ODFW district office a call and probably next year sometime we're wrapping up this program right now and have had a lot of really awesome volunteers. But if you're interested, you can always give the local office a call and see if they will have any opportunity available for next year. Nice. And for just general information, because, you know, things change. We're getting into fall here. There's obviously a lot of changes that are going on as far as regulations and different advice and updates. Where's the best pe place for people to go to just be updated on what ODFW is doing and, and what they should be aware of? 
Sure. Especially for fishing regulations and that kind of thing, the best place to go is myodfw.com and check out the recreation report. And that's divided into different regions of the state. You can click on where you're interested in going and get more information as well as regulation updates. There's a regulation updates tab that you can click on that we keep updated with all the latest information. Nice. Well, Beth, it's always so nice to talk to you and find out more information about these programs and different things going on. We've got a lot of segments actually on our YouTube channel uh, with you talking about what to do if you encounter a cougar or a bear or other things that ODFW is doing. So always appreciate your time and information. And thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Greg. And for everybody watching, again, this is Fox 12 Now. Uh, thank you for joining us. We've got more segments coming up. So we're at 1.30 p.m. If you're watching live, you're going to be able to tune in wherever platform you're on. I'm going to be talking to the director of a movie called Sticker. Now, it's actually about stickers. So that, that's really all it's about. But it's about sticker culture and everything that goes along with that. And I think it's really, really interesting to find out more about it. And the world premiere of that movie is going to be here in Portland. So that's kind of the Portland tie into this, the sticker culture here in Portland and what that's all about. I always love finding out about things that I have no information on. So that's what we're going to be doing here at 1.30. So you can join in live for that. But I will uh, sign off for right now. I'll be right back then. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.